Yo, if I had a hundred sheep and one of them got away, I would leave the 99 and go find that one. responsible for displaying the Georgia state flag after nine, nine years and after comments from Valdosta Historic City Councilman Andrew A. Gibbs on March 9, 2023, true, still, speaks for itself. Yes, members of our armed forces should be honored and respected, especially since Valdosta Lowndes County is home. To Moody Air Force Base and America Battlefield Airmen, whose lives are on the line in foreign nations of the world, and should be respected and honored. GBR. St. John 8:32, Joel 2, verse 1. with and grateful for all the men and women who um, 
helped make this city run so well. We thank you, Lord, for this mayor and our, our city council, our attorney. We pray, Lord, that you would give them extra blessings. Be with us in this meeting tonight. May we have clarity of thought and mind. May the decisions that are made tonight glorify your name. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Seeing none and hearing none, the minutes are approved by acclamation. We'll move on to item three. Firstly, and only of the public hearing items. Item A, consideration of an ordinance to rezone 1.76 acres from single family residential R6 to multi family residential RM as requested by ISH Holdings. The property is located at 915 West Street. The Planning Commission reviewed this at the February 27th regular meeting and recommended approval. A nothing. Matt Martin of Planning. Planning Director will present. Hi, Hello, thank you, Mayor. Um, this property is located along the east side of West Street, about halfway between Gordon um, and I guess that is Adair Street. Losing my geography here. Um, property is currently vacant. Recently had buildings demolished back in October. Um, you see the zoning pattern um, on the screen that shows all R6 around it. Character area is also pretty unanimous around there. It's established residential which as you know only allows um, the eligibility of residential zonings. RM is at the top of that list. Aerial imagery showing the rooftops and the development pattern of the area, pretty all residential, except for a couple of the larger buildings, which are churches, and then the convenience store, the corner of West and West Gordon. Subject property pictures, this is how it looks from West Street. You see the foundations of the prior existing buildings. Um, this is the larger piece of the property looking east, uh, where the larger building used to sit. Um, the view looking southward down West Street, um, and then more toward the west as you could look down Monroe Street, and then looking northward up West Street toward West Gordon. Um, the church that is nearby on the street corner to the south. And then in your packet you have the survey drawing. Remember the subject property is the 1.764 acres be rezoned to multifamily. The applicant also owns that smaller parcel that's shown there, um, 2 point, or 0 0.251, that is large enough in R6 zoning to accommodate a duplex by itself, and that's what they're proposing there. The proposal for the rest of it is technically called multifamily um, because of the size and the number of units. Uh, 12 units total arranged into six duplex style buildings, but all on one parcel of land. Uh, with one entrance drive. Side plan in your packet is conceptual, um, drawn by an architect, but with some engineering considerations in it. You see how the buildings are labeled. Um, building A is that separate duplex on the other lot that is not part of the subject property, um, but B through G are the six buildings. And the, you see they share a driveway with parking area, a turnaround for the fire truck. Um, this is in the local historic district. Uh, it's been before the HBC twice, first for the demolition of the existing buildings that was approved back in October, and the second one was on February 6th, and there they received approval for new construction um, for this site plan that you see, as well as the style of the buildings. Um, duplexes, uh, mirror images of each other, each unit is a two bedroom, 1,088 square feet, um, with this style that's approved. Floor plan is also shown there in your packet, so you can see and scale how it would be furnished or could be furnished and how the rooms compare. Um, rezoning again is R6 from R6 to RM. Planning Commission reviewed this at their uh, February meeting and found it consistent with the conference plan. The stands for exercise of zoning power which are there in your packet and they are recommending approval. The applicant I believe is here and can answer questions and I believe the architect is on his way. Um, I'll be glad to answer any other questions you may have. Any questions for Matt? I'm just going to ask 
just this one question. You know, I did ask the next time about the fire truck going in there and they had to look drive off for it when you're making the area. So I was looking at the bike that was uh, in the zone. And if you would be big enough for the uh, 911 for the truck to come through there. And you did tell me that they have that drive uh, drive off or drive away for the fire for the fire truck. Correct. Will that be like designated so other people will not park and put their vehicles? Um, I was trying to read to see if they were Right. Sure. Probably. And remember, we're not approving a site plan, but that is a fire code requirement. They don't have a choice. Um, and it will be up to the fire marshals to the final design and any signage that's needed. Um, but yes, just like a fire lane in front of a commercial business, you don't want vehicles there. It's for fire access only. So this is something to be reserved for emergency vehicle use only. Um, how it might get used otherwise when no one's looking is the same issue as people parking in a fire lane. So it's that same kind of thing. Um, it may boil down to how it's designed um, in terms of how well it would accommodate parking versus a turnaround, you know, for a fire truck vehicle. Well, I just had in mind because when we change it to multi, multi, multi unit, multi housing, whatever, that we do consider that we got to have that 911 fire truck that we have to And that's fine. Correct. Sure. And that's part of the review process for any multifamily development um, in terms of the site. They also, of course, look at the building designs, fire sprinkler systems, um, distance to fire hydrant, a whole litany of things that they have to review. All of that is applicable here. Thank you, Matt. Any other questions for Matt? Matt, Matt? Yeah, this is a public hearing item. This time, is there anybody that would like to come forward and speak in favor of this request? Hello, everyone. Please state your name and address. Yes, my name is Julia Dean, and I live, I mean, Julia Robinson, and I live in. 941 Lakeside Drive, and I'm in favor of this project. I'm the owner of it, of the land. So, do anyone have any questions? Any questions, for Yes, I have a couple. Uh, when we look at it, uh, the format that this man just brought out, how do you just build, the city just built the home 920, and that first duplex is going to be facing 920, correct? Yes. Okay. And the other, from B through G, will be going south with that cold cul de sac. It'd be like, I'm going to say the name that I know. It'd be like facing the pie joint way, right? Am I correct with that? Or would it be facing. Uh, it would be facing um, 921A. It would be facing A building. There will be five duplexes in the middle. And the A building will be facing 920, and then the C building will be like side of Monroe Street. So I'm thinking since A and C is facing front, front they will be West Street, and the other ones in the middle will be considered Monroe Street. Okay. And my next question was, um, with you being the owner and people who rent your building, will you have someone that's going to make sure that we don't have any activities going on in the area? that if they're not following the guidelines of, let's say there's activities going on there, and would you be willing to have those people move out to protect the seniors in that area? That's a good question. I would not be for, say, be the uh, responsible person for that. I would get a real estate for that. Okay. Yes, have a real estate to have some good rules and boundaries and everything. And we're most likely they're going to do the, um, the credit check. So. Okay. Hopefully we'll get some good tenants in there and we'll get some good revenue. Because we don't ha we're gonna have it set up where they can um have a washing and dryer, but you know a lot of people don't like to buy a washing and dryer. And maybe back in the day, remember we used to have that building over there for the laundromat? Maybe we can generate that back and get some, you know, some revenue up and down on the west side. Okay. Mm -hmm. That was my question. Other okay. than that, I've talked to everyone and we'll Okay. Well, I have um a request. I've noticed that they're getting ready to build some sidewalks on um, on West Street, but I don't know what side the sidewalk's gonna be in, be on. So I would really appreciate it if I could get some sidewalks on my side where I'm getting ready to build. They are, that's exactly what it's gonna be. Oh, that's exactly what it's gonna be, yeah. good. Yeah. And then I have one more. <laughs> While I'm here, I have, I have one more request. I have a 
big, huge tree in the yard. Uh oh, that's going to be they're going to be talked about too. You're looking at that too. Okay, then. So we're all on the same page, and I really appreciate it. And I am really for this project. All right, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh huh. Well, I just have one quick question. Um, are we, can we look forward to you duplicating this elsewhere within our city? Well, I, I will hope so. I will hope so. If this project here goes well, I am looking into advance. We hope so. I hope so. Uh -huh. I got one more. Hi, Joe. Could you buy in and do something down here? No, ma'am, but I can't look into it. I really can because, like I say, I'm thinking about the laundry bed. Because like a lot of people don't like to buy appliances into an apartment that they're not going to be living in for, for a long, long length of time. And I'll look into that too. You won't be All right. Maybe you can help me. <laughs> All right. Um, you said you were looking at uh, property. Yeah. It's typically the property manager that has most of the control of who's in and who's not to be in. If there are violations, they're the ones that can determine whether or not Right, right, that's true, that's true. But no, I don't have one in mind. I was gonna search around and, and you know, get some um get some some what they call it, some some uh, report on them, you know, to see how good this property manager is, see what this property manager does, you know. And I was just gonna um, look around for one. But just as soon as we get the kick in the dirt, that's gonna be my main project and looking for a good property manager. And your buffer gonna be the you're going to have a greenery as your buffer, and you're going to put a fence in front of the buffer or behind the buffer. Behind the buffer. Behind. It's going to be the kind you can't see through. Right, right. It's going to be the wood kind. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Julie, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Is there anybody else at this time who would like to come forward and speak in favor of this request? I am Luella Tillman, and I live at 920 West Street, right across from 921. I don't, I'm not against uh, putting this duplex in front of me, but if it's possible, by me being a senior citizen, will you all consider putting a senior citizen in front of me at 921? <laughs> if it's okay. <laughs> well, I'm out of our control. <laughs> I say if it, I say if it's possible, could you play senior citizen at 921 in front of 920? Uh -huh. Thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to speak in favor of this request? Seeing none, is there anybody that would like to speak in opposition to this request? Again, seeing none, counsel is yours for action. I'd like to make a motion to accept the uh, request for these numbers from our safety department. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further comment? All in favor, show of hands. Perfect. Council Clement. We'll move on to item four ordinances and resolutions. Consideration of an ordinance to amend chapter 42, environment article 6, clean air. Ordinance to include regulations for vaping, Chuck Dickens. Our finance director will present. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As we discussed at the work session, this is an amendment of the Clean Air Ordinance of 2003. Uh, this simply applies the uh, tobacco rules to vaping. Uh, there's been some concern expressed from council about the effects of uh, vaping on the health of our population, particularly our, our younger population. And uh, we had originally hoped that uh, state uh, regulations would come into play. That has not happened. And so this is simply an ordinance to apply the tobacco rules to vaping. So this would make anything that you cannot, anywhere you cannot smoke, you will not be able to vape. So it basically closes a loophole that lets you vape but not smoke. Uh, I'll be happy to take any questions you may have. Council, any questions for Chuck? Chuck, thank you. Council, it's yours. Motion in a second. Any further comment? All in favor, show of hands. Council, thank you. On to item five, business contracts, agreements, and expenses.
expenditures uh, to make consideration for request to purchase 17 self-contained breathing apparatus with cylinders for the Bowles and Fire Department. Our Fire Chief Brian Bowles. How are you doing? Good. Good evening, Mayor and Council. As we spoke Tuesday, we're coming before you tonight to request permission to proceed with the purchase of 17 self-contained breathing apparatus. This is going to be phase three of our three-phase plan to, to bring our self-contained breathing apparatus up to National Fire Protection Association standards. As we talked about the current economic environment, we have 127,000 left in SPLOS this year marked for the purchase of these SCBAs. The quote come back, sole source or, or state contract rather, at 141, 576.43, which gives us an overage of $14,576.43. When we purchased our cascade system that fills these bottles, we actually went under budget by almost $26,000. So that covers the uh, overage here if you, if you approve the purchase. And I also would like to add that we have applied once again through assistance firefighter grant funding assistance to continue the purchase of both SCBAs and structural firefighting gear. I'll entertain any questions. Council, any questions for Chief? Chief, thank you. Thank you. Council, it's your direction. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion that we will approve this request as presented by Chief Bobbleco. Second. Motion and second. Any further comments? All in favor, show of hands. Thank you, Council. Move on to item B, consideration for request to approve a contract for professional services or compliance with phase three of the Georgia Environmental Protection Division Consent Order. Bradley Air, Director of Utilities, to present. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, yes, this is a consideration request uh, to approve phase three of a contract for professional services uh, for the, uh, in support and compliance of our uh, Georgia EPD consent order, uh, which is a, a renewal of a contract. Uh, we've had phase one and phase two. A um, little history, the city of Valdosta entered into a consent order agreement uh, with the Georgia Environmental Protection Division in August of 2020. The city of Valdosta content, uh, contracted with Barge Engineering later in 2020 to provide engineer, uh, professional engineering services and support in complying with consent order requirements. Uh, previous program supports uh, phase one and phase two were approved by council and successfully completed. Uh, by the engineering consultant. Uh, among other tasks, this phase three agreement will include uh, BARGE will conduct bi-monthly in-person work sessions with the city to review program progress and review with the INI action plan schedule. BARGE will provide assistance to the city for required semi-annual progress reports that are submitted to the Georgia EPD. BARGE will provide uh, guidance to the city regarding timing requirements of uh, specific projects to facilitate meeting the overall consent order deadline. Uh, BARGE will maintain a project uh, tracking log to support the overall consent order rehabilitation deadline. Uh, BARGE will renew the annual contract with the flow monitoring vendor for the 2023 software and cellular communication contract. Uh, and BARGE will provide support under this agreement uh, from the date of this contract through approved, that is approved through August 11th of 2025, uh, which is the consent order deadline. Um, staff uh, recommends that we approve this um, consulting engineering support uh, in the amount of 100 and $71,000. Uh, Barge is on the city's list of approved engineering consultants and uh, has a done, a, done an excellent job in assisting the city in um, the CMOM program. And uh, I'll take any questions. Got some questions for Brad? Here. This is keeping us in all the denial of our current consent order? Correct. Okay. Correct. Got some other questions? Brad, thank you. Council to your Second. Motion and a second. Any further comments? All in favor, show of hands. Council, thank you. Move on to item six, local funding requests. Item A, consideration of a request to participate in the new national opioid settlement. Richard Harding, our interim city manager, will present. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, as you know, the city of Valhausen is a 
participant uh, along with many other political subdivisions and uh, public entities in the global innovation regarding uh, mass man manufacture and distribution of this highly addicted opioids. During the course of this litigation, certain defendants have reached settlements. The amount of the settlements proceeds uh, and the use will be uh, dictated by the state. Uh, to participate in the settlement, the city must authorize uh, and execute the uh, participation package. Uh, we do not know exactly how much we do not know uh, the settlement amount that we will receive, but we know that if we do not uh, participate, we will receive nothing. Uh, staff recommends that the uh, city participate in the National Book of Settlement uh, and execute the uh, participation package. Council, any questions for Richard or for Council? Hearing none, choose for action. Mayor, make a motion to approve the agenda item that's presented. Second. Motion and second. Any further comments? All in favor, show of hands. Council, thank you. Unanimous. Move on to item B. Consideration of request for phase one master pump station improvements at the Wendell Gucci Wings water treatment plants. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Mayor, this is a request for phase one of master uh, pump station improvements. Um, the master pump stations, Reamer Station and Gornto Station uh, was constructed in 2014 and they pumped the majority of the sewage generated in the city of Valdosta to the Withacoochee uh, Water Pollution Control Plant. Since their commission, um, the master pumping stations exhibited problematic issues that have created ongoing maintenance and repair issues. Uh, some facts and issues after initial startup of the master pumping stations, the city's utilities uh, central maintenance staff noticed severe slamming of the check valves, movement in pipe headers, breaker tripping, and uh, pipe joint failures uh, that has led to a, a sewer spill. Turnip Seed Engineers was commissioned at that time to prepare an engineering report and study after a sewage spill event, um, as mentioned, uh, at the Gornto lift station. Uh, Turnip Seed com completed an evaluation of the pumping stations in January of 2023 that revealed numerous shortcomings or defects and recommended significant needed improvements in their findings and final engineering report. 761,000 of this proposal was budgeted for fiscal year 23 and approved by council and are listed as follows. And you can see uh, on your packet there the list of um, uh, items that were scheduled for um, in the budget there. Um, the proposal for these phase one improvements is 799,000, which includes 38,000 engineering fees for their consultation coordination and oversight that was not originally budgeted. Um, the severe slamming at the check valves and movement in pipe headers and breaker tripping and point uh, pipe joint failures will continue until these improvements are made and really are is necessary. Um, we recommend the approval of 799,000 for these uh, improvements. I'll take any questions. That's any questions for Brad. Brad, thank you. Council, it's yours for action. Mayor, I make a motion to um, approve the request of state. Second. Motion and second. Any further comments? All in favor, show of hands. <laughs> Council, thank you. Mm -hmm. Item C, consideration of request to approve the purchase and transfer of real estate for the Griffin Avenue Affordable Housing Project. Richard Hardy, our interim city manager, to present. Thanks again, Mayor. Uh, on May 5, uh, 2022, the Mayor and Council passed a resolution to authorize the expenditure of the American Rescue Plan funds for the development uh, for available housing uh, to assist in the provision of approximately 80 units of affordable housing on Griffin Avenue. The city completed approximately $3.3 million of offer funds to assist with the acquisition and financing of this gripping uh, project. As stated in the resolution, the city will purchase the subject property and 
and then transfer further property without loss of housing property. Even though the resolution noted above has passed, as always, the city has to authorize the following. The purchase of the subject real estate and the subsequent subject uh, transfer without loss of housing property. Staff recommends uh, council approve and authorize the purchase of the real estate for the Griffin Avenue project. Council, have questions for Richard? Richard, thank you. Council, cheers for action. Mayor, I have a motion to approve the authorization to purchase real estate for the Griffin Avenue project. Good. I ask that you also put in there the transfer of such as well. And transfer as well. Second. Second. All in favor, show of hands. Council, thank you. On to item D, consideration of a request to approve an additional 5% discount to local builders, builders based in Lowndes County or contiguous county, or new construction only. Chuck Dickens, our finance director, present. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as we discussed Tuesday, this is an uh, agenda item to provide an additional 5% discount to local builders uh, as defined at Lowndes County or contiguous counties uh, for new construction only. Uh, the uh, inspections fund tracks the costs and revenues generated by the permitting activities of the city. The current state of the economy has provided that revenues are more than covering expenses, and the city's therefore in a position to provide an additional discount uh, on those services. And so we are requesting that additional 5% discount from now until the end of this fiscal year, that being June 30 of this calendar year, June 30, 23, uh, again, for new construction only. I'll be happy to take any questions you may have. Well, it would be only for the uh, the builders who come in, and they would know about it. They would tell them about it at the desk, uh, or when they apply for it online or over the phone. So when they come in to apply for it, uh, it would be computed at that time. There's no way, no other way at that time, so people know that they get an additional five percent. We we can certainly put it on the website. Website, Facebook page, each day to be Right, well, yeah, yes, the HDA is aware, but yes, we can certainly. Uh... <laughs> Very much. Any other questions for Chuck? So that way all the contractors would know about this the way the council would just say it. Yes, ma'am. Anyone who visits our website would know anyone who comes into the office, uh, well, would obviously know because they would be told at that time. Uh, but if they apply online, they would have to go through the website, and uh, we'd put that right there so they would know at that time. We're not passing because a lot of a lot of things that we approve, a lot of people don't know what we have approved. Right. Because a lot of people don't go on the website and all that. That's how that's what I was asking the question. How are we going to get this out to the constructors other than through Facebook and our website? Is there another way we can do it? Well, uh, again, we would we could work through the the Home Builders Association uh, and. That generally speaking, I think social media and the website are the uh, best tools for something like this. Thank you. We can probably be included uh, in that flyer that comes out by email. Right, we, we can uh, email out to, to our list. But it is a collage that comes out. Right. Any other questions for Chuck? <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Council, cheers for us.
regardless of who is responsible for displaying the Georgia state flag after nine, nine years and after comments. From Valdosta Historic City Councilman Andrew A. Gibbs on March 9, 2023, true, still, speaks for itself. Yes, members of our armed forces should be honored and respected. Especially, since Valdosta Lowndes County is home to Moody Air Force Base and America Battlefield Airmen, whose lives are on the line in foreign nations of the world, and should be respected and honored. GBR St. John 8.32, Joel 2, verse 1.
but that would, that would not be a location you choose. I just use that as an example. But there's a lot of parcels around. I mean, if you go to the... Red vegetables, we'll pick it up with you. Well, we could down and pick it up with you. The time's up. Thank okay. You. All right. Thank you. you. You want me to stay after the meeting? Is that what you're saying? Please. Okay. You got it. Are there any other citizens wishing to be heard at this time? Yes. Can you please state your name and address? How you doing? Good. Thank you. My name is Steve Freeman. I just moved here from West Palm Beach, Florida. And I'm loving about Austin, but I do have a few complaints. Okay, on Northwest 2nd Avenue, there's an alley there that's 1st Street. There's no more um, houses on that property there, on that road there. It's used for drug trafficking at nighttime, and they're throwing trash out onto the right side of the property. The city owns one of those lots there, and um, they say there should be nothing else put there. So what's happening now with the property is it's become a trash area. So when I first moved here, I spent approximately um, about $2,000 out of my own pocket between that alley that I found out the city on. So now what's happening now is the alley is still needs to be cleaned out. So I'm having problems with trying to find out who to get in contact with, helping me figure this out before I spend any more money because uh, I think the city should be responsible for what I found out to clean those alleys out. And that one road that's on First Street, the church said they would even come in to back me if I need signatures to close that road off right there. Steve, on that point, please stay after the meeting. We'll, we'll address that. Do you have another point? Nope. Okay. Thank you. Like I said, I don't know which one of the guys is my counselor. I think I talked to him before. Um, how you doing? Like I said, you will be hearing a lot of me because I just moved here and I'm sort of like stuck inside. So I've got to uh, keep my area like clean. So that's what I'm going to try to keep doing. So excuse me if I come at you. Thanks a lot. Are there any other citizens who should be heard at this time? George Boston Ryan, 5004, West Georgia. Um, I'm a little social media guy. Been over been through 20 cities and others across the state of Georgia trying to make living conditions better by reporting the news that others ignore. been complaining for the last nine years about the Georgia State flag not being displayed in all of the members of our armed forces. And uh, that's a problem for me and should be a problem to all veterans who serve this country, seeing that we are home and moved out to a space. Be that as it may, uh, I don't know if you all heard about the coroner who caused an accident on North in country place. I was called from someone that works at the police department. Then I received three other calls, and I was also given an email where the chief of police made her findings about it. I'm not going to get in it, I'm not going to call his name. But my thing is that I've been saying for years, there's so many things that never reach the newspaper, the TV, and radio stations. I'm not going to say it's a disgrace that we who wore that uniform to protect and preserve our rights that's guaranteed by the documents of this country. It is indeed a disgrace, in my opinion. Then I found out a few days ago that on the Board of Elections website, and I'm sure that all of the elected officials already know about it, the reason I don't know is because I guess I can living the life of an ostrich. I had my head in the hole, buried. But I found out that Valdosta and Niles County is what they call the capital of the South. Now, if Valdosta is the capital of the, of the South Georgia, is there a capital for West Georgia? And is there a capital for East Georgia? And is there a capital for North Georgia? 
and we're not flying the Georgia State flag, is there another agenda that some of us don't know about? The American people have got to wake up because something is happening in this country. And as a retired military veteran, I believe that we stand up for the rights that are guaranteed by the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, and the Bill of Rights. If nobody else in our laws wants them, the veterans and active duty people respect by flying the state flag as in all other states, counties, and cities, you can mark me as one that will never take that. This is the Get to Free Press, and I'm George Boston Rines. Andrew A. Gibbs said that this is a county problem. They have fly flags flying in the city, and that uh, that is a county problem. Well, if you know, I'm the one that insisted that the city put a flag out outside of this building because they didn't have one. The city schools didn't have one, and I am the one who insisted that they put it up, and eventually they put it up. Now, some of the county people assisted me in helping the city to put their flags up. And so it seems to me that city elected officials should be concerned about the image of the city of Valdosta because the courthouse is in the city limits of Valdosta. So it seemed to me that I elected officials from both agencies, this county and the city, should be concerned about the negative images that our beloved city gets because they, we home the Moody Air Force Base. That is in the county. But people from the city also shop in the county. They come to the county. They go to the county courthouse. And so it's just amazing to me uh, how and what's going on here. It seems like I'm not here to point no fingers. All I want is the flags to go up just like other cities and counties and states in the United States, and as the city did after a period of time. Now, for all of you all watching, this is the Get To Free Press, and I'm George Boston Rhymes. I'm going to try to get a comment from Mr. Gibbs, Councilman Gibbs. Thank you for serving the uh, My generation, Vietnam era, was uh, disrespected substantially. And um, it's, it's, it's a sad thing that it happens. But I'm, I'm really glad to see that the way Americans generally perceive the servicemen and women and uh, how their service is appreciated today. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Councilman Gill. Councilman Gibbs. Yes, sir. How are you doing today? Good. How about you? All right. Uh, you made a statement concerning my presentation. And what you said is very powerful. And it is indeed true. Uh, 
the city did not fly the state flag, but I kept being persistent, and you all finally did it. Okay? Yep. But I had people from the county who assisted me in getting certain people to get the flag up in the city. So when I addressed the council as well as the county, my thing is that I'm, I was hoping that we could let, work collectively that I talked to the mayor about, that we all can work together because the city is in the county and we all can assist to make this a better place. I didn't mean to throw any curves, but I do think that all of us should be concerned about the image in both the city and the county. And this is why I asked elected officials from the city and county. I've been before the county commissioners meeting, and I've been up to the state of Georgia, as, not up to the state, but elect, the state officials. And I've addressed it with many people. And I wish that the people that sit on this council will see that somebody such as myself, a retired veteran, care enough about the men and women in uniform that they would assist me because you all may have a better relationship with some of those people in the county that maybe we can get the flag up that it will put a, a better light on our local community. And, and I agree with you on that, but the problem I have though is that each time you come up here, you only address it as one side, like you did tonight. And you got people in the audience that are going to assume and insinuate that the city doesn't have the state flag flying on their buildings. They're not thinking county because they're in a city council meeting. So if you had if you had said what you just said tonight to say, hey, I've talked to the county. I'm asking y'all to please reach out to the county. I've talked to the mayor. I want this to be a joint. That's a whole different. That's a whole different story than what you normally come up here and say. And that's why I wanted to make sure that the people in the audience knew that, hey, we're flying the state flag. We're flying the U.S. flag. It's being flown in all our city buildings. But when it comes to the county building, and I've talked to some of the commissioners, I told one about a month ago the last time you came to talk, and I said, hey, y'all y'all really might need to think about putting the state flag up at y'all's county courthouse. And he said, yeah, he said, it's been brought to our attention. So at the end of the day, though, we can't make them. I mean, I can't walk in there and go hang a flag. I mean, but I did talk to them. I have talked to them. I have spoken to them. But what I just want to make sure is that people who are sitting in the audience realize is that, you know, if you came up and said, hey, the city of Valosta, I know, is flying all the state flags and all the buildings, and I understand that they are. But right down the road at the county courthouse, they're not. And I need y'all's help to help me get a flag there. That's different than how you address it. So I just want to make sure people in the audience know that we are, that we as a city are doing it. Councilman Gibbs, we are live on Facebook. Yeah. And I'm going to leave what you said the way it is. I'm not going to come on you. That's fine. But, but, but what, I, what I'm saying is that I've been doing this about nine years. It took me a and long I appreciate time. That. It and took I, me a I long really time to get Everybody the city. My, it my took me a long people, time for the city. Military. It took me a long time to get the city. All that. It took me a long time to get the city to put them up. And, and I appreciate and, that. And, and I do have some other locations in the city that I, but I'm not going to mention well, it. No, you need because, to let us no, know. No, I'm not going to do it here. I'm like, and I, I want to thank you. But what I mean and is I want to thank you. I want to let us know this, or at least let us know as far as council members, because if there is other locations, we'll document it and get a state flag up. But if we don't know the locations, like, I've been on council for five years, and you have not once come up and said, hey, to the council, these are the other three locations or five locations that I would like to see a state flag on. Not one time. We are live on Facebook, and I'm not going to address that, but I can produce videos. I can do that. But here again, but here again. <laughs> well, now, you said nine years ago. I haven't been on council. No, 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 no. I'm talking, I'm talking. Oh, then, it, hey, thank you very much for your comments. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you.
regardless of who is responsible for displaying. The Georgia State flag after nine, nine years and after comments. From Valdosta Historic City Council. Andrew A. Gibbs on March 9, 2023, Truth, still, speaks for itself. Yes, members of our armed forces should be honored and respected. Especially since Valdosta Lowndes County is home to Moody Air Force Base and America Battlefield Airmen, whose lives are on the line in foreign nations of the world and should be respected and honored. GBR St. John 8:32, Joel 2, verse 1. Are there any other citizens wishing to be heard at this time? Ryan's 5 Georgia. Um, I'm a little social media guy and been, over, been through 20 cities and others across the state of Georgia trying to make living conditions better by reporting the news that others ignore. Um, I've been complaining for the last nine years about the Georgia state flag not being displayed in honor of members of our armed forces. And uh, that's a problem to me, and it should be a problem to all veterans who serve this country, seeing that we are home to move Air Force Base. But be that as it may, uh, I don't know if you all heard about the coroner causing an accident on North Valdosta Road and Country Club. I was called from someone that works at the police department. Then I received three other calls, and I was also given an email where the chief of police made her findings about it. I'm not going to get in it, and I'm not going to call his name. But my thing is that I've been saying for years, there's so many things that never reach the newspaper, the TV, and radio stations. And I'm not going to say it's a disgrace we who wore that uniform to protect and preserve our rights that's guaranteed by the documents of this country. It is indeed a disgrace, in my opinion. Then I found out a few days ago that on the Board of Elections website, and I'm sure that all of you elected officials already know about it, the reason I don't know is because I guess I've been living the life of an ostrich. I had my head in the hole, buried. But I found out that Valdosta in Lyons County is what they call the capital of the South. Now, if Valdosta is the capital of the, of the South Georgia, is there a capital for West Georgia? And is there a capital for East Georgia? And is there a capital for North Georgia? And with not flying the Georgia state flag, is there another agenda? that some of us don't know about. And the American people had better wake up because something is happening in this country. And as a retired military veteran, I believe that we need to stand up for the rights that are guaranteed by the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, and the Bill of Rights. And if nobody else in Valdosta want the, the veterans and active duty people respected by flying the state flag as in all other states, Counties and cities, you can mark me as one that will never take that. Thank you.
who is responsible for this plane. The Georgia State flag after nine, nine years and after comments. From Valdosta Historic City Councilman. Andrew Ray Gibbs on March 9, 2023, true, still, speaks for itself. Yes, members of our armed forces should be honored and respected. Especially since Valdosta Lowndes County is home. Citizens wishes to be heard at this time. Ryan's 500 to Georgia. Um, I'm a little social media guy and been over, been through 20 cities and others across the state of Georgia trying to make living conditions better by reporting the news that others ignore. Um, I've been complaining for the last nine years about the Georgia state flag not being displayed in honor of members of our armed forces. And uh, that's a problem to me, and it should be a problem to all veterans who serve this country, seeing that we are home to move Air Force Base. But be that as it may, uh, I don't know if you all heard about the coroner causing an accident on North Valdosta Road and Country Club. I was called from someone that works at the police department. Then I received three other calls, and I was also given an email where the chief of police made her findings about it. I'm not gonna get in it, and I'm not gonna call his name. But my thing is that I've been saying for years, there's so many things that never reached the newspaper, the TV, and radio stations. And I'm not gonna say it's a disgrace but we who wore that uniform to protect and preserve our rights that's guaranteed by the documents of this country. It is indeed a disgrace, in my opinion. Then I found out a few days ago that on the Board of Elections website, and I'm sure that all of you elected officials already know about it, the reason I don't know is because I guess I've been living the life of an ostrich. I had my head in the hole, buried. But I found out that Valdosta and Lowndes County is what they call the capital of the South. Now, if Valdosta is the capital of the, of the South Georgia, is there a capital for West Georgia? And is there a capital for East Georgia? And is there a capital for North Georgia? And with not flying the Georgia state flag, is there another agenda? that some of us don't know about. And the American people had better wake up because something is happening in this country. And as a retired military veteran, I believe that we need to stand up for the rights that are guaranteed by the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, and the Bill of Rights. And if nobody else in Valdosta want the, the veterans and active duty people respected by flying the state flag as in all other states, Counties and cities, you can mark me as one that will never take that. Thank you. No, if I had a hundred sheep and one of them got away, I would leave the 99 and go find that one. That's right. I look from the locks and jaws of Satan, I come create, penetrate with force from the land of the Lord. If I had a hundred sheep and one of them got away, I would leave the 99 and go find that one. That's right. But I do think that all of us should be concerned about the image in both the city and the county. And this is why I asked 
elected officials from the city and county. I've been before the county commissioners meeting, and I've been up to the state of Georgia, as, not up to the state, but let the state officials, and I've addressed it with many people. And I wish that the people that sit on this council will see that somebody such as myself, retired veteran, care enough about the men and women in uniform that they would assist me because you all may have a better relationship with some of those people in the county that maybe we can get the flag up that it will put a, a better light on our local community. And, and I agree with you on that, but the problem I have though is that each time you come up here, you only address it as one side like you did tonight. And you got people in the audience that are going to assume and insinuate that the city doesn't have the state flag flying on their buildings. They're not thinking county because they're in a city council meeting. So if you had if you had said what you just said tonight to say, hey, I've talked to the county, I'm asking y'all to please reach out to the county, I've talked to the mayor, I want this to be a joint that's a whole different that's a whole different story than what you normally come up here and say. And that's why I wanted to make sure that the people in the audience knew that, hey, we're flying the state flag. We're flying the U.S. flag. It's being flown in all our city buildings. But when it comes to the county building, and I've talked to some of the commissioners. I told one about a month ago the last time you came to talk, and I said, hey, y'all y'all really might need to think about putting the state flag up at Charles County Courthouse. And he said, yeah, he said, it's been brought to our attention. So at the end of the day, though, we can't make them. I mean, I can't walk in there and go hang a flag. I mean, but I did talk to them. I have talked to them. I have spoken to them. But what I just want to make sure is that people who are sitting in the audience realize is that, you know, if you came up and said, hey, the city of Valosta, I know, is flying all the state flags and all the buildings, and I understand that they are. But right down the road at the county courthouse, they're not. And I need y'all's help to help me get a flag there. That's different than how you address it. So I just want to make sure people in the audience know that we are, that we as a city are doing it. Councilman Gibbs, we are live on Facebook, yeah. and I'm going to leave what you said the way it is. I'm not going to come on you. That's fine. But, but, but what, what I'm saying is that I've been doing this about nine years. It took me a and long time. That. It and took I, me a I long really time to get the city. My, my it took me a long time for the city. It took me a long time to get the city. All that. It took me a long time to get the city to put them up. And, and, I, appreciate and, that. I, and I do have some other locations in the city. That I, but I'm not going to mention it. No, you need because, to let us no, know. no, I'm not going to do it here. I'm like, and I want, I want to thank you. But what I mean and is, I want to thank you. you. you I want to let us know this, or at least let us know as far as council members, because if there is other locations, we'll document it and get a state flag up. But if we don't know the locations, like I've been on council for five years, and you have not once come up and said, hey, to the council, these are the other three locations or five locations that I would like to see a state flag on. Not one time. We are live on Facebook, and I'm not going to address that, but I can produce videos. I can do that. But Since here I've again, council, but here saying. again. <laughs> well, now, you said nine years ago. I haven't been on council. No, 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 no. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Hold in. Hey, thank you very much for your comments. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. You all heard that's Councilman Gibbs. He is a little different on a lot of issues. Uh, he was against the renaming of Barack Obama Boulevard. Uh, he was against that name change. But uh, we understand that sometimes it be that way. But But we are going to continue to address all elected officials and whatever is good for the city is good for the county because the city is in the county. And I do believe that if the city and county can work together, I do believe that we can produce a better community. And this is why I'm going to continue to talk about uh, the city and the county to try to make it a better place so when people come from out of town, they won't say, well, it seemed like Valdosta is 50 years behind the times.
and I'm going to continue to do that. We all know uh, you have seen uh, each councilman. Let me go show you. Each council member up here, you about know what they all stand for and what they have fought for. But I will say that we thank them all for serving because I've never served. But these are your councilmen. And when, and when they were getting ready to try to rename Forest Street to Barack Obama Boulevard, and that was a long drawn out process, but the historical archival record will speak for itself. Nobody's criticized, nobody's condemned, but the record speaks for itself. And this is the Get To Free Press, and I'm George Boston Rhines, and I'm hoping that the mayor, I'm hoping that Councilman Gibbs, Councilman McIntyre, Councilman Tooley, Councilman Howard, Councilman, Ta I mean, uh, Attorney Tanner, well, not Tanner, I'll excuse Tanner, but sh sh surely Mayor Matheson, Hardy, Carol, Norton, and Cody, if they can, <clears throat> and if they have any camaraderie with the people of the county, talk to them. Don't let me be the only one talking, because I'm talking on behalf of the citizens here that should care about the men and women stationed at Moody Air Force Base, and they come to the courthouse in the city of Valdosta, and there is no Georgia State flag to honor them and their service, their mothers and their fathers. Here in the courthouse, they have both flags, and I thought, like, you know what, to get them to put one over the city hall and all these other places, including the Rainwater Conference Center, which they still don't have one, and a lot of other places here in the city. It's the county, but the fact is all these areas are in the city limits of Valdosta, and it casts a southern shadow over our beloved community. As a veteran, retired of 21 years, I thank God that somebody cares enough to think outside of the box of incarceration and indoctrination. Now, you all heard. Anyway, y'all have a nice day, Baba Baba God. Peace be unto each of you. I talk like this because I love you. If we had the, the majors and the colonels and the generals that live here, why is it? that they cannot see that this is going on. And did you all know that Valdosta and Lyons County is the capital of South Georgia? Did you all know that? Did you know that somebody called Valdosta and Lyons County the capital of South Georgia? That means somebody may be working to get a capital for East Georgia, for West Georgia and just maybe North Georgia. Y'all better wake up. Y'all don't believe that this government can be endangered. You better wake up. Your relative, your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, and your children served under the Georgia flag and you went on foreign battlefields. Y'all better wake up. Don't wake up one morning and it won't be a South Georgia Capitol, <laughs> they would have gotten this thing together. Y'all better wake up. Bye. Social media guy, and been over, been through 20 cities and others across the state of Georgia, trying to make living conditions better by reporting the news that others ignore. Um, I've been complaining for the last nine years about the Georgia state flag not being displayed in honor of members of our armed forces. And uh, that's a problem to me, and it should be a problem to all veterans who serve this country, seeing that we are home to move Air Force Base. But be that as it may, uh, I don't know if you all heard about the coroner causing an accident on North Valdosta Road and Country Club. I was called from someone 
that works at the police department. Then I received three other calls, and I was also given an email where the chief of police made her findings about it. I'm not going to get in it, and I'm not going to call his name. But my thing. responded to the intersection of Country Club and North Valdosta Road in reference to an accident with injuries. When they arrived on the scene, the entire intersection was a mess with debris everywhere and one guy lying on the ground complaining of injuries. One of the drivers involved in the accident was Austin Fibash, the Lowndes County coroner. I have watched the body cameras from our officers involved. When our officers arrived on the scene, they spoke with Austin and his passenger, who were outside of their truck. Austin told the officer that he had hit his head and neck, and that he wanted EMS to check him out and he was going to have them transport him to the hospital. The passenger told the officer that he was alright. The officer that spoke with Austin and his passenger stated, on body cam, that he smelled alcohol coming from the passenger, but he did not smell any on Austin. Through investigation, our officers determined that Austin was at fault for failure to yield. While our officer was running Austin's information in his car, Austin was transported by ambulance to the hospital. Our officer went to issue Austin a citation, that is when he found out that Austin had been transported to the hospital. Our officer arrived at the hospital to issue him a ticket and they could not find him. When Austin arrived at the hospital, he did not stay to be treated, he walked out the front door. Our officers were looking for Austin and finally located him at 10.25 p.m., two hours later, at the bar Austin owns, the Q Bar on Baytree Road. Our officers on the scene did not know who Austin was, meaning that they did not know he was the coroner. It wasn't until the patrol officer that could not find him at the hospital and called his supervisor that the supervisor recognized the name and knew who he was. I was called Friday night at 9.32 by our shift captain who did not go to the accident scene and told that Austin had left the scene and that he may have been drinking. I told them that if they found him and he was under the influence that he needed to be arrested just like anyone else. When they found him two hours after the wreck and he was at his bar, they can no longer investigate him for DUI. He was issued citations for failure to yield and no license on person. At no time on scene of the accident did any of our officers identify that Austin was under the influence of alcohol. On the accident, there were many first responders dealing with injuries, and at no time did anyone on scene indicate that Austin was under the influence. Leslie Manahan, Chief of Police, Valdosta Police Department, Georgia, 229 293-3101 Manahan at Valdastacity.com Mailtel Manahan at Valdastacity.com
thing is that I've been saying for years, there's so many things that never reach the newspaper, the TV, and radio stations. And I'm not going to say it's a disgrace, but we who wore that uniform to protect and preserve our rights that's guaranteed by the documents of this country. It is indeed a disgrace, in my opinion. Then I found I found out a few days ago that on the Board of Elections website, and I'm sure that all of you elected officials already know about it, the reason I don't know is because I guess I've been living the life of an ostrich. I had my head in the hole, buried. But I found out that Valdosta and Lowndes County is what they call the capital of the South. Now, if Now, if Valdosta is the capital of the, of the South Georgia, is there a capital for West Georgia? And is there a capital, a capital for East Georgia? And is there, a, is there a capital for North Georgia? And with not, not flying the Georgia state flag, is there another agenda? that some of us don't know about. And the American people had better wake up because something is happening in this country. And as a retired military veteran, I believe that we need to stand up for the rights that are guaranteed by the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, and the Bill of Rights. And if nobody else in Valdosta want the, the veterans and active duty people respected by flying the state flag as in all other states, counties and cities, you can mark me as one that will never take that. Thank you. Are there any other I've been on council for five years, and you have not once come up and said, hey, to the council, these are the other three locations or five locations that I would like to see a state flag on. Not one time. We are live on Facebook, and I'm not going to address that. But I can produce videos. I can do that. Since but here I've again. Been on council, but here again. <laughs> well, now you said nine years ago. I had been on council. No, 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 no. I'm talking. I'm talking. Oh, then. It, hey, thank you very much for your comments. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Up next, the game played as if the general public is ignorant concerning this traditional pattern and practice. Moreover, soon the ghetto free press will be publishing the big, big video surrounding this nine-year-old flag issue after Georgia legislature replaced the old, said-to-be Georgia racist Confederate flag that were displayed everywhere including over churches and we maintained the historic pictures from years ago. God bless everybody. St. John 832, Joel 2 verse 1. GBR. <laughs> responsible for displaying the Georgia state flag after nine, nine years and after comments from Valdosta Historic City Councilman Andrew A. Gibbs on March 9, 2023, true, still, speaks for itself. Yes, members of our armed forces should be honored and respected. 
especially since Valdosta Louse County is home to Moody Air Force Base and America Battlefield Airmen, whose lives are on the line in foreign nations of the world and should be respected and honored. GBR St. John 8.32, Joel 2 verse 1 <laughs>